Hello everyone, welcome to the Gate Engineering Online Learning Classes. Today we are going to start a new course for this channel and course is Digital Electronics. This is my first video for Digital Electronics. So in this video, just we will see what we are going to cover in this course. So in this course, we will see number systems and conversion, we will we'll cover all the topics related to the gate exams and university exam and other competitive exams based on the digital logic designs or digital electronics. In some universities, name is digital logic design, in some universities, course name is digital electronics, but contents are the same. So we will see what are the important topics and what we are going to cover in this complete module. So just this is the overview overview of the entire syllabus so first we will begin with the number system and conversion so what is the number systems in this course we will talk about the number system and conversion and in number systems are nothing but the binary number system octal number system hexadecimal number system and decimal number system so we will cover that things and we will convert one number system to another number system also and in this module, we will also see the R's and R minus ones complement, and we will also cover the binary addition and subtractions with the help of complements, ones complement and twos complement. We will cover the weighted and non-weighted co non-weighted codes like that axis three code, eight four two one codes, BCD codes, and so on. And we'll cover. We'll also convert the code converter like that axis three to BCD converter, BCD to axis three converter. And after that, we will talk about the logic gates and Boolean algebra. Uh, and in this part, we will talk about the gates like that OR gate, AND gate, XOR gate, XNOR gate, and so many gates. And we will discuss about the universal gates also, like NAND and NOR gate are our universal gates. So we will discuss that thing. And we will try to simplify the expression with the help of Boolean algebra and logic gates. And in this part, we will also discuss the sum of product. SOP and POS form of the Boolean algebra of expression and we will minimize the expression with the help of KMM that things we will discuss in this um, content after that we will move to the next topic that is the combination of logic circuits and this logic circuit is related to the uh, related to the first two module if you know first two module very well then only you can understand the combination logic circuits because all the things, because in combination logic circuit, you will have to design the circuit with the help of KMAP. If you don't know KMAP, you can't find out the minimized expressions. You can't design the circuit. You should have knowledge about the logic gates. You should have knowledge about the Boolean algebra. So first two modules are very, very, very important for entire digital electronics or digital designs or digital logic design course. So in combination logic circuit, we will cover the adders binary adder and binary subtractors like their half adder pull adder half subtractor pull subtractor after that we will cover the encoder and decoder for coding uh, for coding purpose and we will discuss about the multiplexer and demultiplexer in this course and we will design the functions with the help of decoders and multiplexer for that you should know what is the kmf how we can minimize the expression with the help of kmf and we will also discuss about the ripple carry adders and subtractor and we will discuss magnitude comparator as well. After this module, we'll talk about the sequential logic circuit, which is which is the next part of the combinational logic circuit. In combinational logic circuit, we don't have any memory, no memory in the combinational logic circuit. But we require to store the data. Where we can store? For that, we require some memory. So we will use the sequential logic circuit in which we will cover the flip-flops, resistors, and counters. All these three topics are very important in the sequential logic circuits. And after that, we will see data converters like that. Uh, in real time, we have analog data, but actually we require digitals for the digital processing or digital electronics. So for that, we use analog to digital converter. Similarly, in the receiving side, we require digital to analog converter. So we will cover the analog to digital converter as well as digital to analog converters. Or in short, we can say that ADC and DAC. After this module, we'll cover the programmable logic device and semiconductor memories like RAM, ROM, PROM, EPROM, and so on. Similarly, in programmable logic device, we'll cover PLD, PLA, 
PAL and PRO. All these are programmable logical devices. So we will cover uh, all these topics in this module. And after that, so this is the overall course. This is the overall course that what we are going to cover in this syllabus, in this uh, module or in this uh, video series. So these are the important topics uh, and these are the topics are very important for the gate exam usually you can get the 8 to 10 marks questions in the EC gate exam and this course is very scoring course you can even get full marks out of full in this course. So you understand this course very well. So let's begin with the short discussion about the number systems and uh, uh, what is the number system, what is the introduction of this course. So short discussion, why we are going to discuss about the digital electronics, why we are studying this course, so that we require. To understand about the digital electronics, first we should have some knowledge about the analog signal and digital signal. So we can identify what are the advantage of the digital signals as well as digital devices. So if we plot one analog signal here, this is the amplitude axis and this is the time axis T and Y axis is the amplitude. So this is like a analog signal. So here you can see, you can observe that analog signal is continuously varying. You can get value at any time. At any time you will get different value. At every time you will get different value. So analog signal is continuously varying in time. But in case of the digital signal, but in case of the digital signal, digital signal has only two levels. One is high level, one is the low level like this. If you see, if you see the digital, uh, digital signal, in the case of digital signal, you will get only two levels, one at high level, one is the low level. So, we can assign value is one for high, we can assign value zero for low level, one and zero. So here, the amplitude is continuously not moving, not varying. It is fixed for certain time. Now understand this statement, analog signal or analog information is made up of continuous values within a given range. So analog signal is varying continuously in time and digital signal is defined by only two possible values which is 1 and 0 and 1 and 0 is representing the binary numbers because it has only two labels. Two labels is represented by binary numbers and we can give high to 1 and 0 as a low and we can also write it on and off or in case of true false we can give true for 1 and false for 0. So digital information is not continuously varying in time uh, but analog signal is continuously varying in time and amplitude is changing due to this analog signal is more susceptible to noise. If some noise is added in the signal, analog signal will change fast. But in case of a digital signal, signal will not affect by the noise because of it has only two labels and the label is defined by the threshold value. If label is defined by threshold value, if this is the signal and if we give this is the threshold, so if after adding the noise signal is lying in this region, its value is still 1. If signal is lying in the bottom region or lower the threshold region, value will be 0. That's why it is not affecting. If signal is coming in this region after adding the noise, its signal value will not change. It will be 0 only. So that is the advantage of the digital information because it is less susceptible to noise compared to the analog signal. This is the most advantage. And exit voltage values are not important, but their class is very important in digital information. The complexity of operation is reduced as we have limited number of labels. We have limited number of output amplitude labels, only one and zero, but in analog signal we have infinite number of amplitude labels. So it gives high accuracy at the label, the digital label. So this is basic introduction and we saw that what are the advantage of digital devices compared to analog devices. And we have also covered in this module and we have also covered in this video what we will cover in the entire syllabus. So for regular update of the videos, 
on the digital electronics you subscribe the channel and you will get two to three videos in every week for more update about for more videos okay thank you